And now, DeForest Kelly, another of your stars on parade. Transcribed from New York City, your Army and your Air Force present a fantasy titled The Snow Queen, featuring Margaret Draper as Sigrid and starring as Eric DeForest Kelly. This is the story of a lovely young girl and of a handsome young man who lost his way in the woods during a terrible blizzard. After a while, he became unconscious from the cold, and when he awoke, he found himself in a strange land ruled over by this beautiful young queen who was made of snow and ice. It was the legend of this land that if the snow queen should fall in love and marry a mortal man, she would change into a real person and live with him happily ever after. But even in this strange land, legends sometimes go wrong. I do. I do. So Sigrid, the Snow Queen, married Eric, and he took her home with him. Now Eric lived in a beautiful house way up on top of a tall building in a large city. And this is where he brought Sigrid to live. Well, how do you like our little home, Sigrid? Oh, it is very beautiful according to the standards of the world that you live in, Eric. I'm not used to so many colors, and it's so very, very high. What if someone should fall off? <laughs> there, darling, no one is going to fall off. That's why the wall is there. Now, you go to your room and get all dressed up. Tonight, I'm having a party for you so you can meet all my friends. You're so beautiful, Sigrid. They won't believe it until they see you. But can't we be alone for a little while? Just until I get used to your way of living? And what is this party we have to have? Oh, it's just a gathering of people who are supposed to be your friends, and they come to talk and look and eat and talk and... Well, that's about all. But why can't I meet them outdoors, on the ice, like we did in Winterland? And everybody could skate. Now, now, darling. You'll have to forget all about what you did back in Winterland. We can't do those things here. Besides, it's too cold outside. Now, go change into your prettiest dress. They'll be arriving very soon. All right, Eric, I'll go. But I'm already afraid of them, and I haven't even seen them. Eric! Eric! Now, where is this wonderful wife of yours? You did promise us that we would see her tonight. Well, if you ask me, my dear, something's gone wrong already. You know how these marriages are. She's someone he met out in the stick somewhere, and now he's brought her here to live. I tell you, my dear, it won't last. It won't last. Oh, Parker, will you check the thermostat? It's awfully chilly in here. And be sure all the windows are closed. And, oh, yes, you might start a fire in the fireplace. Oh, I can't seem to get warm tonight. Oh, Sigrid, darling, there you are. I want you to meet everyone. I'm sorry I took so long getting ready, Eric, but I was nervous and afraid to come out here. I never felt this way before back in Winterland. Oh, I'm sorry. I promised you I wouldn't say that word again. That's all right, darling. Now, come on, Mrs. Van Alstine's most anxious. Hey, they've all gone. Whew. It was some party, wasn't it, Sigrid? Everyone who is anyone was here tonight. And I know they all loved you. Oh, I can't understand what is the matter with this room. I can't get warm. Aren't you cold, Sigrid? No, Eric, I'm not cold at all. I think it's very comfortable here. I'm glad that everyone is gone. Now we can be alone together. Eric, I know. Let's go out and take a long walk in that big park you showed me out the window. Oh, it's snowing. And everything's so clean and white, just like back home in... Oh, I forgot again. Go out? On a night like this? It's much too cold, and besides, I hate snow. Oh, if I had my way, I'd like to live in a warm climate all the time. As a matter of fact, maybe we should spend a few months at my place in Florida. Yes, I'll arrange it first thing in the morning. Now, when Sigrid heard this, she didn't know what to do. She just couldn't go to a warm land to live, even with Eric. 
Yet she couldn't tell him why she couldn't go, and too, he was always cold. Hadn't he said himself that he hated snow? She'd have to do something, and right away, because she was the only one who knew that the old legend about her was not working out right. Something had gone wrong, yes, for you see, Sigrid was still made of snow. Then Sigrid wrote a letter. Dear Eric, I am going away. It is the only thing I can do, for I have no choice. I will return to my people where I belong. The legend, for some reason, did not come true. I can never make you happy unless it does. All my love, Sigrid. So when Eric woke up the next morning, he found that note pinned to his pillow, and Sigrid was gone. But how could she do such a thing? The legend, for some reason, did not come true. I don't understand what she's talking about. What legend? And what does it have to do with us? Well, I'm going to get her back, and then we'll see about this silly legend. So Eric packed his things, dressed up in all his warm clothes, and went back to the country where he had become lost in the blizzard to look for his beloved Sigrid. Sigrid! Sigrid! Where are you? It's Eric! Sigrid, if you love me, you will answer. Yoo-hoo! Down there! I say, are you looking for the Snow Queen? <laughs> yes. Yes, I am, but who are you? Or rather, what are you? I am a snow elf. <laughs> and I know who you are, too. You are the poor mortal man whom our good and beautiful Snow Queen left all alone. <laughs> she left you all alone. Oh, stop that nonsense. I've come to bring her back now. Won't you help me find her? Well, I'm not supposed to. But if you promise not to tell old Judge Sleet I helped you, well... I won't tell a soul. Maybe. Now, please hurry. Well, just follow me. Just follow me. Hey, hey, Snow Elf, slow down, will you? I'm not used to all this outdoor exercise. <laughs> you better hurry. You better hurry. Oh, all right. All right, but I hope it's not much farther. Well, old tired man, here we are in Winterland. <laughs> Mortal men are so slow, they just don't know. Oh, he's gone. Well, I'll just have to find Sigrid myself. Sigrid, it's me, Eric. Oh, Eric, my darling, you've come back for me. Sigrid, why did you ever leave me? Why? I had to leave you, Eric, because the legend of Winterland did not come true. What legend? That's all I've heard about ever since this business started. And besides that, that, that silly little snow elf kept making fun of me because I was a mortal man. Now, what's wrong with being a mortal man? I think it's pretty good myself. Of course, Eric, of course. And now, if you'll just sit down here beside me, I'll tell you all about the legend. <laughs> that is, if you don't mind sitting on a chair made of ice with a cushion made of snow. I don't care what it's made of. I just want to know about this legend that's keeping us apart. Well, you see, Eric, a long time ago, a young girl lost her way in the deep woods outside of Winterland. And the snow elves found her lying half frozen in the snow and brought her back to be their queen. Old Judge Sleet, who ruled Winterland, didn't like her at first because she was not truly one of the snow people. But eventually he came to love her, as all the snow elves did. And as he had a strange magic power, he prophesied that one day the Snow Queen would be rescued by a mortal man who would come to Winterland. They would fall in love. But Sigrid, that's us. Shh, darling, let me finish. He said they would fall in love, and the mortal man would take the Snow Queen back to the land she came from. And if he really and truly loved her, she would become a mortal woman once more. But if not, she would remain a figure of snow and ice. Sigrid, then you mean that you left me because you didn't change back to a mortal woman? 
Because you think I don't love you? Yes, Eric. And I couldn't stay with you simply because I am unreal. Oh, Sigrid. My darling Sigrid. Eric! Oh, Eric, you've broken the spell of the legend. Yes. Yes, something has happened to you. You look so different, so warm and so beautiful. Don't you see, Eric? The kiss did it. Well, you're right. But I don't understand. I guess I was so busy wondering how all my friends would feel about you, getting your new clothes, showing you my beautiful home, that I, I never did get around to really loving you. I guess I really don't deserve you now that you have become a mortal woman. Of course you do, Eric. And we can go back to our home now and live happily ever after. Yes, our Sigrid and our Eric lived happily ever after. And to show you just what I mean, let's look in on them for just a moment. Eric, please close the window for heaven's sakes. This place is as cold as a barn. You better light a fire in the fireplace. Oh, certainly, Ooh. certainly, dear. Now, there, is that any better? Oh, dear, I'm so restless. Can't we go somewhere on a little trip? Just the two of us? Darling, that's just what we were going to do. Go up to my cabin at Sun Valley for a whole month. A log cabin at Sun Valley? Eric, you know I don't like the cold weather. Now, I've been thinking about the warm tropical breezes and the swaying palms at your Florida place. Oh, it's so nice and warm down there now. Oh, but I thought you liked the cold. I did. But you must realize, darling, that a mortal woman has the right to change her mind once in a while. <laughs> Mr. Kelly, we'd like to thank you for a very delightful performance. Well, thank you, Mr. Ripley. It's really been a pleasure. But I would like to say thanks to Margaret Draper, who played Sigrid, Pat Hosley, our elf, and to Paul Tomain and Helen Christen for their very able support. And now, before DeForest Kelly returns to the microphone with a final word, I have an important message to young men everywhere. If you enlist in the United States Army now, you'll be serving your country at a time when you're needed most. What's more, you'll have a choice of several branches as well. If you choose artillery, for example, you'll receive training in many technical fields. You'll learn gunnery, observation, surveying, map making, motor maintenance, and many other skills. And if you want the tops in service, you'll have a chance to become an airborne artilleryman. So why don't you visit your local Army and Air Force recruiting station and find out for yourself about the opportunities open to you in the artillery and in other branches of the Army. You are needed now. Ladies and gentlemen, this transcribed program was presented by your Army and your Air Force in cooperation with this radio station and your local recruiting headquarters. The Snow Queen was written by Sergeant First Class Everett Day and was directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Joe Ripley speaking. And this is DeForest Kelly inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another of your Stars on Parade.